All cell phones, pagers, blackberries, camera speakers, zero phones. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome. Uh, it's uh, my privilege to uh, introduce to you once again the uh, Principal Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, Mr. Ryan Henry, who, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago maybe longer than that, uh, was here to talk to you about uh, his consultations um, with uh, nations in Africa uh, about the, the new Africa command that is uh, being stood up. And uh, he had just finished his uh, first uh, rounds of consultations with countries in the region. And he has just come back from his second uh, and is agreed to come by and give you a brief update and take some of your questions with respect to where we are in that process. So with that, let me turn it over to you. Good morning. <coughs> uh, I've just returned from a second consultation trip uh, to the continent of Africa. It was part of a State Department and International Development Agency trip. Um, to AFRICOM, we wanted to give you some feedback on this second trip and what we heard. As many of you know, the Africa Command, known as AFRICOM, will better enable the Department of Defense and other elements of the U.S. government to work in concert with our African partners for a more stable environment <coughs> in which the political and economic gr growth can take place. It will also help in setting the conditions whereby humanitarian and developmental assistance can be used more effectively. On this trip, we met with senior defense and foreign ministry officials from Algeria, Morocco, Libya, Egypt, Djibouti, and the African Union. We also met in Paris with the French government and defense attaches from 40 countries that are currently serving there. As we did in our first trip in April, we explained the broad outlines and goals of AFRICOM and then sought their viewpoints from our partners as uh, their inputs are valuable to us as we start to make the decisions about the way ahead and specifics on the stand-up of AFRICOM. From my perspective, there were three uh, significant takeaways from the trip. First, that counterterrorism was a top security concern for the countries that we met with on this trip. They were interested in how AFRICOM would help support their counterterrorism efforts how current programs and initiatives would be impacted. What we said, that it was our intent not to make any dramatic changes as Africa comes online, 
but to see how we can be more effective by integrating the civilian parts of the U.S. government that will be resident on AFRICOM staff. The countries, secondly, the countries were committed uh, to the Africa Union as the continent's common security structure, and they advised us that AFRICOM should be established in harmony with the AU's regional security structure. We responded that we were investigating on how best to do that, as AFRICOM's goal is not to lead the security efforts on the continent, but rather to support existing African countries and organizations take the lead and be successful. Finally, uh, we received positive feedback about the design and mission of AFRICOM, which brings together the diplomatic, developmental, and defense aspects of U.S. foreign policy in one regional unified command headquarters. Uh, while it will not represent the developmental and the diplomatic as aspects uh, solely on the continent, it will be in support of, of other U.S. government efforts going on there. <clears throat> African leaders agreed with us that the security challenges in African, Africa are, are interwoven issues of economic development, response of governments, rule of law, disease prevention, and disaster response. They saw Africa's, AFRICOM's integrated approach as a more constructive way for the Department of Defense to partner with African organizations and help bring about long-term peace and security. And with that, I'll be glad to take your questions. Yes, ma'am. You touched on this a little bit, but we've heard repeatedly, as Africa Command has been discussed, um, that this is going to be a command that integrates State Department efforts and, and aid efforts. And I'm wondering if you can help me understand how a military command in practice is meant to coordinate and direct the direct functions and activities that fall outside the scope of defense. How is, it, how is a military command going to direct State Department activities within Africa? It is not. It is only going to direct Department of Defense activities. It will look to the security as aspects or the defense aspects of a three-pronged approach in working with foreign countries and especially on the African continent. There is a diplomatic aspect which is headed by the State Department and in theater that is headed by the chief submissions or the ambassadors of each of the 53 nations. AFRICOM will support them in their efforts on the security aspects and they will have members of the State Department staff integrated into the command to better work uh, that harmony between the, the uh, state effort and the Department of Defense effort. Rather than it just purely being a military command, we will have aspects of State Department. In fact, the deputy commander uh, will be a senior official uh, from the State Department. And so we will better be able to work in harmony with their efforts. Similarly, uh, the developmental aspects, usually headed by the uh, uh, Agency for International Development, uh, we will have uh, people on staff that will understand their perspective much better and we will be able to integrate with their efforts. We will not lead in their areas of the U.S. government effort. What we will lead in is the defense support to those initiatives, which will be led by the, those agencies and departments themselves. Well, that integration, is that something that you in creating Africa Command C as um, un uniquely needed in this area or is it a response to needs that have gone unfulfilled elsewhere? It is clearly needed on the African continent and it is an opportunity to experiment. Uh, we don't have all the answers uh, but we do no need uh, know that uh, we need to look at new ways of doing things and AFRICOM presents an opportunity to be able to look at how we might do that. Uh, we will stand up in um, sometime in later um, fiscal year 08, uh, ca late, late calendar year <coughs> 08, and at that point in time we'll have an organizational structure. Uh, but what it'll look like five years later will probably be different. We're going to make the uh, command as adaptive as we can and, and uh, to learn as we go along. Um, so we, are, we do not think that we will have all the answers uh, when we initially stand up. This, this, this is an area that is different than we've done in the past. And our approach is different. And um, we're, we're trying to adapt to the new security environment that we find ourselves in the post-9-11 world. And we think that a whole of government effort uh, is what's needed in many of these areas rather than people just specifically uh, working um, their particular areas 
without integrating with the activities of the other part of the government. Yes, sir. If it's a whole government effort that's needed, why do it under a DOD structure and a DOD leader? Shouldn't it be something done by state or, or someone else? Well, it depends which aspect you're talking about. The security or the defense aspect should be, we believe, should be done under a DOD leader. The diplomacy aspect will be done either from uh, the State Department itself or the ambassadors in the field, and this activity will support them. The developmental aspects will be done for the Agency for International Development, and this organization will support them. It's just by having the command with elements <coughs> and uh, personnel from those different government organizations, we will be able to do a better job uh, of supporting their efforts. Could, couldn't it send, or what did you find in the total of your two trips uh, about whether it sends the wrong message to have this as a, a, a military organization with other aspects to it? Why not have it as a U.S. government civilian organization that has liaison to the military command? Uh, and perhaps other other agencies uh, might experiment with doing that. Uh, we're responsible for what the Department of Defense does, um, and we have not uh, met with any pushback uh, from the people, uh, uh, countries uh, in the region, or uh, or other partners that are interested in partners partnering with us on the African continent. Yes. What kind of uh, DD assets do you see being consolidated? into this region in terms of manpower platforms, that kind of thing? Yep. As we stated before, uh, AFRICOM is not designed to result in any new troops uh, in, in, on the uh, continent, and it's not uh, designed to result in any new basing structure. Rather, it is a way to organize our efforts. Currently, the continent of Africa comes under um, the uh, responsibility of three different regional combatant commanders the commander out of Stuttgart, Germany, European Command, uh, the commander out of Honolulu, Pacific Command, and the commander out of Tampa, uh, Central Command. And we're taking those efforts and taking an area of responsibility for the African continent and giving that to a single commander who will worry 24 hours a day, seven days a week, print, uh, just about African issues. Currently, African issues are not necessarily the first priority of those other commanders because they have a much big, bigger area of responsibility and many different issues. So now we'll have a commander who's focusing on this all the time, reporting to the secretary on his progress, and he will be supported, again, by uh, members of his staff who represent other parts of the U.S. government rather than just the military. But it's a small yeah. but. But an effort to this is going to be looking at things like security, counterterrorism. So do you see some of the components of those commands specifically meant for that being focused more under the African command? Well, the, uh, the elements of the command, the command itself will be a staff. Um, those units that are engaged in activities on the continent, normally for exercises or, or uh, security cooperation activities, will be units that will rotate forward from the United States for the duration of their activity and then return back to the United States. There will be re rotational um, units and, um, and members of the service. They will not be people that are assigned specifically to that command. The command itself will exist only of uh, staff functions. Yes, ma'am. The, the countries that you met with on this last trip, how did you choose them and have any countries or governments declined to meet with you about AFRICOM? Uh, no countries have declined to meet with us. Uh, it was uh, uh, the previous trip. We did sub-Saharan African countries that we thought were key stakeholders on the continent, and these were ones that we needed to engage in the Maghreb and, and in the Horn of Africa. And also, if I can ask, when you just said that um, there's going to be no new basing structure, but there will actually physically be some sort of headquarters, presumably on the continent of Africa, so there will be a, a, a base, if you want to call it, there will we, we are not anticipating a base. There will be a staff headquarters. Um, we uh, have looked at a number of different models, um, and, uh, and we are waiting for a final report on, on how we might approach that. Um, one model that is under consideration is one to distribute the command. We've learned information technology allows us to bring people at dispersed geographical locations together 
Uh, we've done a lot of split base operations <coughs> in, in the current operations that we're doing today. Uh, so we are investigating the, the possibility of having the command uh, distributed in a number of different nodes uh, around the continent, uh, which would not result in any, any sort of base. Yes. Can I just follow up? A couple of questions. First, are you committed to having the four-star commander on the continent of Africa as his headquarters? Yes, the four-star commander will serve uh, in theater. Uh, the specific timing of that and, and when we will be able to make that move, um, that's still under study. And my other question is, given this structure, fundamentally, just bottom line, what difference can Africa Command make in both the counterterrorism mission on the continent and humanitarian relief and humanitarian assistance issues? What difference can you make in those two areas? Well, a humanitarian response to a crisis tends to be a, a, a crisis situation. And uh, when the crisis hits, uh, I'm not sure exactly how much difference there will be, but leading up to it, and developing and doing the exercises and overseeing that and making sure you have a command focus on the specific needs of the African continent. We believe it can make a difference. Uh, additionally, the difference a, com a, a single commander can make, we have three commanders that are, that are doing both of those activities now. Uh, they don't do it as their first priority for Africa. And the difference is we will have a senior four-star who is worried about those activities and other activities on the African continent as his principal and uh, uh, basically only responsibility. So it has to do with a focus of effort at the senior levels. What's your assessment right now of the extremist or Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda threat on the continent that this command may be facing and may have to deal with? Well, it's, it's, the, it's the same threat that uh, different elements independently are uh, dealing with now. I mean, we, we know that Al-Qaeda is working in a distributed structure itself, that it's establishing nodes uh, throughout the region, um, and that there's been an establishment of a um, uh, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, and um, that it, it's conducting activities there. Um, the establishment of this command, as we said, and I said when we dealt with people that were concerned about counterterrorism, we don't plan on fundamentally changing anything or uh, our approach uh, to start with. Um, after the commander's had some time to look at the situation and, and work with it, then, then he might choose to make some choices. Uh, but going into it, this is basically a realignment of our activities uh, on the continent. As we're doing that, we're looking at some innovations that we can apply. One is bringing in other elements of the U.S. government in the establishment and the operation of the command, uh, putting a senior official from the State Department in, because we see this is principally focused on uh, non-kinetic means. This is not uh, designed uh, or looked at as a, um, uh, the, the objective of this command is not war fighting. The objective of this command is to help Africans be successful in developing a security environment <coughs> so that they can both lead and address their own security needs without needing outside intervention. So I'm, just let, me, let me just follow on. I'll, I'll come back later on. Yes. Uh, how are you communicating with Congress, and what can Congress do to help you set up uh, AFRICOM in terms of, are you looking at completely new resources here in terms of, of funding the command? How are you, you know, what kind of uh, assistance are you looking for from Congress? Uh, we, we have uh, briefed um, uh, different committees on Congress to date, and we will continue to do so. We'll, we'll do some here in the next month uh, to keep them as informed as we go forward. Um, and having discussions with them, uh, it's not been specifically decided if, if new resources uh, will be required for this. Uh, one issue is the staffing of the command, uh, and, and we're looking on how best to do that, and those studies are going forward now. Uh, no final decisions have been, been made on that yet, though. Uh, so we're trying to consult with Congress, as we are with our partners, uh, in what our thinking is and as we progress. Yes. Can you give us any idea on the timing of the selection of a commander 
and the selection of uh, a headquarters location or locations. And can you also clarify the issue? You said it would only be a command staff on the continent, but I understood AFRICOM would uh, take over responsibility for the task force in Djibouti, for example. Also, you said uh, forces would go in for training and uh, interaction type uh, exercises, but what about combat? Will, if, if U.S. combat forces engage on the continent, will AFRICOM have the responsibility for them? Uh, first of all, as far as timing, the selection of the commander is a decision the president makes. Um, and um, so that when, when he feels confident he's found the right person, then he'll forward that to the, uh, to the Senate for his confirmation. So we'll have to await his decision on that. Uh, as far as timing on the decision making, there are some timelines uh, that we're working. Um, um, but since this is a new area and they might adjust with time, we're not, we're not discussing them openly on what those timelines are. Um, we are looking for an initial operating capability, uh, as we've discussed with you before, in uh, October of this year, uh, where uh, an AFRICOM structure as a sub-unified command to European command would start to take on some responsibilities uh, with a goal uh, prior to the end of uh, 08 that it would be able to be a, a fully unified command and be able to handle all responsibilities. So, Fiscal 08 or yeah, calendar? That, 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 that is the current plan, but it's not something uh, that is written in stone. And on the And group? then as far as in regards to the Joint Task Force Horn of Africa, when the um, uh, Horn of African elements of Central Command uh, become part of AFRICOM, which will not be it, its initial operating capability, but prior to full operation capability. When that transition is made, then Joint Task Force Horn of Africa will, uh, uh, will also transfer over with it. Uh, again, we do not see any change in the activities that we're currently doing in the near term, and so they would continue to do uh, the civic action um, uh, type of activities that they're doing today. Uh, and, in, and then in regards to uh, forces in that, uh, <clears throat> again, this uh, command is not, uh, um, it's not optimized for war fighting. We're, we're optimizing it for, uh, again, engaging in security cooperation activities, uh, and that's where the, the planning effort's going. Uh, uh, we do not, uh, and we, uh, the, the intention is not to use it for intervention uh, into any African affairs. Um, the one time that we can possibly see U.S. troops uh, participating on the African continent is in support of a humanitarian disaster, a natural disaster. We've seen uh, uh, recently uh, the tsunami in Indonesia, the earthquake in uh, northern Pakistan. If events similar to that occurred, uh, then perhaps the commander uh, might use forces uh, to be able to support African efforts in that at the invitation uh, of African countries and organizations. Uh, again, not on an intervention basis, but on an invitation basis. Did, did you, Barbara, want to finish your well, question? Well, I do want to get back to that very point. You say not on an intervention basis and that the goal is to help Africans be successful, um, but uh, you could see it in a humanitarian or natural disaster, so I suppose the elephant in the room here is Darfur, and I understand fully that's a political decision, not a military decision, but is this the organization that Africans should look to if the U.S. decides that Darfur is enough of a humanitarian disaster as you mentioned it, it, it? It's a humanitarian disaster generated by political effects. Uh, and uh, there is a way ahead on Darfur, uh, and, and that's being worked uh, with the United Nations and with the African Union and, and, and with the government of Sudan. Uh, and we would not see AFRICOM making any difference uh, at all in the approach that we're taking with that. Uh, again, uh, they who Africans should look for for their security needs are their own nations. They have a security structure that they're building uh, with the African Union and the five regional uh, components of the African Union, and, and AFRICOM would look to su support them in their success of building that capability. Uh, but they should not look to the United States for the solution of their security problems. But I wonder what you're encountering from the governments you speak to out there, both, I guess the two that come to mind obviously are Sudan, uh, perhaps Chad, and Somalia. Do you worry that this is raising expectations amongst African governments or the AEU 
that the U.S. military is going to do something different, that it's going to be there uh, for some sort of help or assistance, that it's not there for it? Uh, do you, do, are, you, are there going to be expectations in Africa that Africa Command is not really there to meet? It's not really I can't speak to what expectations will be. Uh, that's dependent upon uh, who the individual or group is. I can tell you in all the consultations that we've had to date, simultaneously while we were sending the message, we were getting the same message back that long-term uh, security on the continent should be uh, uh, beyond just individual countries but uh, on a regional basis should uh, be under the leadership of the African Union, that the African Union um, approach is the right one, that each of the countries uh, that are members buy into that. And, uh, and they are not looking for leadership from the outside. And that, that's both the message uh, that we have been receiving and the message we have been sending is, is that we would like to see what we can do to help in the success uh, of those efforts in building a foundation. But the specific activities and meeting um, uh, near-term needs or crisis needs, uh, that would be, uh, Africans would be uh, in the leadership of that, and they would be su uh, supplying the forces to be able to do that. Yes, ma'am. Um, going back to something you said earlier, that you didn't foresee a change in activities upon formation of Africa Command. You saw this more as, as initially just a realignment. Why, why not implement a change in activities or increase the change, for, particularly in counterterrorism activities, given the fact that there's a growing threat of al-Qaeda in Africa? Why not take this opportunity to increase those activities, make a change to them, address that issue right away? Uh, we are working uh, with countries in the regions and countries that s feel like they're specifically affected by counterterrorism, uh, by terrorism, and, and we are working in, in aiding them um, uh, in their counterterrorism efforts. We think that we have a uh, cooperative uh, uh, arrangement with them. Uh, they appear to be satisfied with that. Uh, we. Uh, appear to uh, be meeting with some successes. Uh, the, um, and so uh, we don't see a compelling need uh, to change right now, and they don't see the compelling ne need either. Yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity while you're here to ask you um, a question on a different topic. As the principal deputy undersecretary for policy, I was wondering if you could walk through me um, which uh, you see as um, success uh, in Iraq. Um, from, from your perspective. I think you're going to have the opportunity later today, if I'm correct, to talk to both the Secretary and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and I think that they would be most, both more articulate and uh, more authoritative in giving an answer on that. Okay. Yes. How much in your, the, your most recent meetings did you talk about Sudan and these humanitarian problems? Uh, actually, we were looking to the long-term future. We are not dealing with uh, specific current crises. Uh, and so uh, the, the specific issue and the way ahead uh, um, did not come up as part of the formal consultations. And, uh, I mean, and informally, it was just uh, continuing to look at the way that's been, a, been established and, uh, um, and um, and the role that the African Union was playing in that. There was no discussion of a U.S. role. Yes, ma'am. Have you had any talks with uh, Liberia over um, about Afri AFRICOM? And I know that there, there's a, a certain push to, to have some parts of it uh, based in Liberia. Uh, there have been informal bilaterals uh, with them. They have not been part yet of the formal consultation rounds. Uh, we will be talking to them in the future. Besides actually traveling to the region, though, we have, have been having meetings uh, with uh, embassy personnel here in, uh, in Washington, D.C. on a periodic basis, uh, and they have also been part of those discussions. Nigerian embassy personnel? Uh, well, all, all the African countries uh, uh, that are represented here as part of the diplomatic uh, group, uh, Liberia included. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, diplomatic relations have warmed a bit with Libya. Can you talk a bit about um, your talks with Libya on this on this trip and uh, any concerns they may have with uh, 
U.S. kind of taking a bigger role in Africa now? <clears throat> well, um, I think Libya's uh, – I, I don't want to characterize for the Libyan government how, how they look on look at this, um, but um, th they have stated in the past that they think that uh, Africans should solve their own problems, uh, that uh, uh, external powers, uh, United States or, or someone else, uh, should limit their involvement into uh, infrastructure development and, and that sort of assistance. Uh, but in the area of security, um, that they are um, – they're looking for African-only uh, solutions. Uh, that being said, um, it still seemed like there were, there were areas that we could cooperate together. Did they seem cooperative in the, in the meetings, or? Uh, I, 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 I'm not an expert on what the diplomatic speak is on this. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I thought that they were uh, fruitful meetings. They, you know, they expressed their opinion. We expressed ours. They weren't exactly the same, but there was overlap in many areas. I, it, it, was, it, it definitely was not uh, any sort of uh, contentiousness. Uh, but I wouldn't say that we see eye to eye on every issue either. Can yes. you figure out the impact yet on UCOM in terms of uh, personnel and resources? Uh, to date, uh, all the effort has been is what is it going to take uh, to be able to stand up AFRICOM. Uh, when that's finished, then each of the commands will look and see does that make any difference in their, their current structure, but that will be uh, a, a later on analysis. We'd have a preliminary view on whether or not it's going to slice away, you know, X percent to X percent of their funding per year or their – or, I mean, I – Well, European Command's mission is changing. Uh, security cooperation is becoming more important. They have a lot of activities that traditionally they haven't been involved in. So I would say uh, I haven't heard discussions of cuts. I've heard of discussions of shifts in emphasis. Um, uh, obviously, uh, NATO, as it starts to do out of area ops, um, there, there is uh, some, some different capabilities that are needed there. And I, th and I think the command is evaluating how those shifts impact it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.